Greetings friends, it's Alexander again from AI vs God and we're getting close to Noah. This is now Genesis 6, increasing corruption on Earth. As always, I will read on my physical Bible first, you'll see it on screen, and then we ask the AI what it thinks about it. So let's go there. When men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive. And they took as their wives and they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old the men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man, animals, and creeping things, and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, Noah and the flood. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt with God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second and third decks. For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two very salt shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every sort of food that is eaten and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Now I could go on here, but uh, the whole Noah story is pretty long and it's going to make a very long video. So we want to keep it short here. So I fed this into the eye again, Genesis 6. And I pretty much said, esoteric teacher with vast knowledge of the Bible and Christianity, as always, explain the esoteric meaning of Genesis 6 and summarize it. I can actually save myself the summary, so let's just go straight to the esoteric interpretation. Sons of God and daughters of man. Sons of God, esoterically, these could represent spiritual beings or the divine aspects of humanity, possibly those who maintain the connection with the divine or higher consciousness. Daughters of man represents the material or earthly aspects of existence focused on physicality and perhaps lower desires. This is actually to be taken, one of the few passages I guess that can also be taken literally, because you know it yourself, you've seen it many times. You have a man who is on a great path, he's doing things, he's building things, he's building things for others and whatever, and then a beautiful woman comes along. And he drops everything because he's so in love with her and that's all he does and he's focused on sex and her physical appearance and all these kind of things. This is by the way. In no shape or form the woman's fault, there is not your fault for being beautiful or just being a woman, but the the feminine is also sort of a temptation for men he has to live with all his life, right? To not fall for it, because it's very visually stimulating, obviously, right? That's how we reproduce. So but I find this to be interesting that many men have lost their connection to the divine and their actual goals in life because of the lower desires towards the daughters of men. It's very, very interesting. Now, the union of Nephilim means the union might symbolize the blending of spiritual essence with material form leading to a race of beings, the Nephilim, who are powerful but also potentially misaligned with spiritual purity. That's exactly what I was just talking about. Um, although this is a more positive version of what I said, um, I didn't mean it that negative, by the way. This describes it better. It just means, because Christianity also talks a lot about how men and women are equal, even though wives shall submit to the husbands, that's a later topic, but they are to be seen 
equal and together that union forms the strongest being in on, on earth rather but the key thing is that the man is together with his wife that one wife and he's not just driven by the lower desires he actually looks at the soul of the woman and sees the beauty in her soul and not just in the flesh so this is it still does lose spiritual purity though obviously this can be seen as an allegory for the fall of spiritual beings into materiality or the corruption of spiritual wisdom when it becomes too entwined with worldly desires exactly that's pretty much what i was talking about maybe i should read them before i put my own comments in there <laughs> so this is interesting and this as you can tell also starts leading down the line of sons of god losing their higher consciousness due to physical fleshly desires going down the drain which will eventually end up in god being pissed and flowing and flooding everything god's regret and lifespan limitation this reflects a divine recognition of humanity's deviation from its spiritual path esoterically reducing lifespan might symbolize the shortening of the time one has to achieve spiritual enlightenment in one life or it could represent the increasing distance from divine immortality as humanity becomes more materialistic. This is what I was mentioning in the previous video, in Genesis 5, when we were talking about the lifespans as a sort of metaphor for you live, you have eternal life when you walk with God, because you literally are in heaven, which is outside of time, because time only exists in this universe, not um, with God, and you are in hell, if you repeatedly live through sin on earth and break up karma, once you work through your karma, you will be back with God. But once you, uh, as long as you live on earth in sin and break up karma, you sort of live shorter. You have to live through that shorter lifespans all the time and die every time over and over again. So this is um, what's meant here, I think. Noah is a righteous man. Noah represents the preservation of the divine seed or the spiritual lineage amidst corruption. So he stayed pure. And key thing though, this is what I mentioned earlier, he stayed pure even though he had a wife and children. So he knew of the flesh, fleshy desires, but that didn't corrupt him. And that is the key thing. It doesn't, as I said, it doesn't mean that female sexuality is bad. It's just if it is the only driving force for you to be with that woman. Or if you are controlled by it. Like with porn, for example, many men struggle with they I struggled with for 13 years, by the way. So I know of sin, trust me. Um, this is this is sort of the pure version of it. God created us in that image that we are man and woman, and the woman is physically very attractive to us for a reason. But if it corrupts us, and this is our only driving force, that's bad. So he's the archetype of the initiate or the one who has kept his spiritual integrity in the corrupt world. Exactly. The Ark symbolizes a vessel of salvation or preservation of spiritual truths. Building the Ark can be seen as the preparation for preserving the essence of life, both physical and spiritual, through a period of great transformation or chaos. The Flood. On an esoteric level, the Flood can represent purification, a cosmic or karmic cleansing of the earth from accumulated negativity or sin. This is how I saw it. So, this might be confusing for many, but I don't think that there was an actual an actual Noah with an actual flood on earth that killed everything and only he and two of each kind survived. This is a metaphor for a cleansing of your sin on earth and the, the negativity and sin you did and start over once you sort of come back to God. This is pretty much what I did. What most people did that were sinning all their life because Jesus said rightly right he didn't came to earth for the righteousness he came to earth for the sinners to repent and if you were like me who has been sinning for many years because i didn't believe in god at all not that god so to speak and then you actually accept him at some point you have to purify yourself and this is a rep repenting for example letting go of all the bad things throwing out all the bad stuff that ruins your life getting rid of bad people getting rid of bad habits this is the noah's flood and this is the god's flood with noah you keep the only the purest parts of yourself with you in noah's ark and everything else is washed away with that flood through your life 
everything else that is bad and it stops you from walking with God. I think that's the idea of that actually. I don't think there was an actual, maybe there was a flood back in the days because many uh, traditions actually talk about it. It's not just Christianity, but this is sort of a metaphor for you coming back to God. And this might even be true for Christians who have been Christians all their life, but there, there is a phase in their life where they actually realize they still have been sinning. And so there must be a flood in their life to get rid of the bad stuff and start anew. And this can actually happen many times throughout your life. Initiation. A form of mass initiation where only those in the Ark, those who land with spiritual principles, survive, suggesting a new beginner or rebirth for humanity. Or for your mind. Or yourself in this case. What often symbolizes consciousness or the emotional realm in esoteric teachings? The flood could signify an overwhelming influx of new consciousness or return to the primordial state from which a new creation can emerge. I especially think of this as emotions because of course getting ridding yourself of all the bad things is emotionally tough for you especially because you have probably been accustomed to all these bad things for so many years so water could here be also shedding tears to getting rid of things for some people for example this might even be getting a divorce because they realize that their spouse they didn't get together with them because they actually loved them, maybe just for the physical, and then they actually have to get out of there. Maybe not just the divorce, maybe you're just in a relationship. And this can be followed by tears as soon as you actually go through the purification with Noah or your own mind or the flood in this case. Covenant with Noah. The covenant symbolizes a new agreement or relationship between the divine and humanity, where humanity through Noah is given another chance to live in accordance with divine will. This can be seen as the establishment of a new spiritual law or order after the old world has been washed away. Again, I see this more as a metaphor here, where you have a covenant with yourself once you, for example, with me, I have a covenant with myself to never fall back into these old things. I know I will be sinning for sure, we are all sinners. And we are, it's virtually impossible for us to never ever sin, at least in a little sense. So I know this will be happening, but the covenant with myself is that I try to be as good as possible and I walk with God, that's what I want to do and this is what I do. And so the covenant is not so much between humanity and God here, it's between me, you, each of its own, that you follow the Christianity and God and what you decided to follow and you actively decide to let go of the old, fleshly driven, materialistic worldview, worldview and you follow the spiritual law now. This is your covenant you have with God yourself. So again, I think this is a metaphor for you with God, not for humanity with God. I might be wrong, let me know in the comments what you think of this, how you read that. Broader terms. The destruction and renewal of the story reflects the esoteric principle of cycles in nature and spirit. As I said before, um, everything is cyclical in the universe, everything. But destruction is necessary for renewal akin to the alchemical process of solve et coagula? What's that? Dissolve and coagulate. I don't know what that means. The inner arc, on a personal level, building the arc can represent the inner work and one must do to preserve the spiritual essence, yes. In terms of moral and societal decay, preparing oneself for spiritual rebirth or enlightenment. Yeah, building the Ark is pretty much building your... I actually have a um, on my... I have an app for habits and I call it the spiritual Ark. Very simple. For me this, for example, means I... Um, like in this, for example, in the morning I pray, I read the Bible and I meditate for 15 minutes at least. And this is sort of the, the minimal effort I put in each day. That is the spiritual Ark I do every day. This is the inner Ark I built to keep at least a little bit of spirituality going every day. I usually do more, but that's sort of the, the minimum. Could be something else for you, whatever it is. But this is, I like the idea of the arc in yourself. It's just something you do every day, sort of a ritual, if you want, every day to keep yourself following the spiritual law. And the duality of existence, the chapter underscores the ongoing struggle between spiritual purity and material corruption, a theme central to many esoteric teachings about the human condition. And we will see this a lot more throughout the, the whole Bible. This is pretty much, this is our struggle we live with on earth. The fleshly desires 
we are especially these days exposed to all the time and denying them and still following spiritual purity. So yeah, that was sort of the, the setup for the Flood and Noah's um, arc, literally. So let me know what you think of this and I will see you guys in the next video and God bless.